All right, division of polynomials. So we've looked at multiplication, addition, subtraction, so we can finally come to division. And there's really two different types. Um, there is the whole concept of just dividing by a single number, which is this little 5x squared. And then we'll get into ones where we're dividing by a binomial um, here. So we'll have to take a look at things like that here. But example number one, the easier one is notice whenever you're dividing by a single monomial on the bottom all we're going to do is we're going to split this monomial under each and every single term in our numerator so the 5x squared goes underneath the 10x to the fifth and again the second term and the third term and what we do is we just do we simplify them individually so 15 divided by 5 is a 3 x to the fourth divided by x squared is just a 2 and 20 divided by 5 is a 4, and again, 3 subtract to 2 makes a 1. All right, so these are the easy ones here. Let's go for it here. Let you guys try it yourself first. <coughs> All right, so we're going to put the 6x underneath each of the terms, and then reduce them individually here. So 6 goes into 12 twice. And again, the x to the fourth on top, we got 4x's on top, we got 1x on the bottom. Reducing that, it gives you x cubed, minus sign. 6 goes into 18 three times. And 3 subtract 1 makes 2, so x squared plus sign. 6 goes into 24 four times. And x squared subtract x to the 1 gives you just an x. All right, get, making things a little tiny bit more complicated is the whole concept of about multiple variables or multiple bases. So the negative 9x cubed y squared has to go under each of the terms above. All right, and then simplifying them individually here, it looks like negative 9 is going to go into 27 negative 3 times x to the fourth, x cubed leaves us another x on top. y to the seven, y squared, the difference there is five, so it would be y to the fifth. All right, the minus sign comes down, but then you got this little negative on the bottom. So the easiest way to do is just combine these here and just put a whole plus. So subtracting a negative, same thing as addition. 9 goes in 81 9 times. Again, x to the fifth here, x cu cubed here, so x squared is the difference. And y to the third, subtract y squared gets you, or divided by y squared, which really is just the subtraction of the exponents. 3 minus 2 is a 1. Next, I just want for you to try out, and then this whole concept of positive exponents. Let's see what that all means. All right, 8a to the fourth underneath each of the terms here. So going over here, uh, 8 doesn't go into 12, but I can still reduce it by 4 maybe. So how about 3 over 2? 4 goes in 12 3 times, 4 goes into 8 twice. 8 to the fifth, 8 to the fourth, so subtracting the exponents gives you just an a. I'm going to leave it on top. 8 divided by 8, that would just be a little losing battle. So they cancel each other out. Hey, 8 to the 4th also cancel. That's gone. So everything's gone. We do have to leave a 1 here. All right, then 8 goes into 16 twice. And this one, notice, it's 8 to the 3rd on top, 8 to the 4th on the bottom. So that means there's an extra A on the bottom, or we can think of it as subtraction. 3 minus 4 is a negative 1. All right, 4 divided by 8 doesn't happen, so it would be 1 half in reduced form. And 2 subtract 4 is a negative 2. All right, what we have to do is we have to express all the results with positive exponents. So we have to change this and change this somehow. So it has positive numbers in the exponent. So that's okay. First term stays the same, second term stays the same, but the third term, that little negative one here, that means we're gonna 
keep the two on top, but we're going to a to the negative one becomes just a. They take it's taken back to the denominator, and then they have an exponent of just one. Same thing happens here. A to the negative two. That means I have to move this this piece right here into the denominator, and we have a squared. All right. Um, on the online homework, it's uh, you'll have you'll be required to type this in, and let me forewarn you here. Uh, really, this part right here is the one that gets students mixed up here. So if you're going to type this in online, what you're going to do is going to say three a divided by two plus one plus two divided by a. And then when you get to this part, since there's mo mutual things happening here. I should just write down 1 divided by parentheses 2ax squared. I'm sorry, 2a squared here. Now, writing it like this on a sheet of paper is fine, but the computer doesn't think about it this way. Because whenever you write 1 over 2a squared, what the computer naturally thinks is this, is that you're taking that 1 half and you're, and you're multiplying with a squared. It kind of looks like this. That's what the computer thinks. So in order to tell the computer, no, that's not what you're thinking. The whole entire 2a to the second actually belongs on the bottom. You have to put parentheses here. So 2a to the second belongs to the bottom. That's how you do that. Now this means 1 over 2a squared. OK, so all this was really division by a single term, or we call it a monomial. Okay, so let's jump a little further now. Dividing a polynomial by a, a polynomial. That's what we want to do here. Let me give you some, uh, just an example here. There's really two different ways to divide. Just depending on the homework, it actually will tell you. It'll say divide by factoring. Or it'll say divide by... Uh, let me grab my textbook here. It says divide by factoring numerators and then dividing out common factors. And there's another portion in the homework that says divide using the long division method. So we're going to do number one, which is factoring out common factors here. So I think you know how to factor this. Two numbers multiply 12, add to 7 is 3 and 2. So writing it out, x plus 4. I'm oh, just kidding. It's x plus 4 times x plus 3, not x plus 2 times x plus 3. All right, now we're moving on to dividing a polynomial by a polynomial. Now, on the bottom, there's just more than one term. The homework divides this into sort of two different sections here, or s not sections, but types on the homework here. So given something like this, on one of the homework, 13 through 26, it says divide by factoring numerators and then we're dividing out common factors. So it basically wants to factor. The other part is divide using the long division. So look at this here. Let's take a look at factoring things down. So I need two numbers multiplied by 12, add to 7. 12, 7, I think we did that before. Something about 4 and a 3. And notice x plus 4 is right here. And then we can cancel off the common factors, which is x plus 4. And since there's nothing left on the bottom, there's, well, technically there's a 1, but that means it's a whole piece, so we don't need to write down the 1. Then there's also something called long division. And let me give you an illustration of it right here. How about if we did this by long division? So x plus 4 on the outside, and this one comes in underneath as the radicand. So the question is, what multiplies x to give you x squared? Just x. x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. And if we subtract or add the opposite, we're going to get 3x plus 12. And the whole process starts all over again. x times what gives you 3x? Positive 3. x times 3 is 3x. x times 4 is 12. And subtract to give us 
the remainder of zero. Okay, so this factoring process, this factoring process does work, but it only works if there's going to be a remainder of zero. This does not work if there's no remainder of zero. But it's faster. This process takes longer and eventually get down to zero. But again, sometimes may take a lot of difficulty there. Okay, so for number four, it says divide, but technically you should say divide by factoring. Divide by factoring numerators and denominators and then dividing out common factors. All right, so let's do that. Let's see if we can factor this down. So the topic, the top polynomial, 2x squared times x is probably the only way we can sort of deal with that. All right, 3y squared. I do this right here, just see if it's the setup correctly here. The only way I can get a 3y squared is a negative 3y and a negative 3y. And the reason why I know these have to be negative is because my middle term is negative. All right, with that said, the bottom does not change, but it does reduce with something here. To 2x minus 3y. OK, now let's go on to long division. But before we do that, let's uh, go back to pre-algebra real quick here and sort of think about how we do long division here. So number five, just to skip back in time. So 35 doesn't go into seven. Uh, 35 does go into 75, and that's going to be twice. And twice, two times 35 is 70. And then all of a sudden, what we do is we actually subtract. Any leftover pieces go down to the bottom. And then four goes down to the bottom. Now the question is, how many times is 35 going to 54? Well, it's still going to be 2. Oh, no, it's going to be 1 this time. Okay. 1 times 35 is 35, and subtract that off. We would get a 9, and then bring down the 6. 19, sorry. Bring down the 6. 35 goes into 196. That would be exactly 5 times with some extra left over. 5 times 35 is 166. 75 and the remainder would be 20. Okay, so the way we would write it is like this, right? It would be a 215 and 21 35ths. You could also write it. Let me set up a little something here. All right. So that is the answer. My only question to you guys is, is this also the correct answer? Can I just do it like this? 200 plus 10 plus 5 plus the remainder. So notice I broke it up into its the individual units. This is the 100 units, the tens, the units, and the single units, and then the tenths place. OK, but these two really are the same exact number. So let's go for it here. Number six. Let's divide 3x squared minus 8x minus 1 by x minus 3. So x minus 3 on the outside and 3x squared minus 8x minus 1 on the inside. All right, how does this work? And then again, it's going to take you about maybe four or five times just sort of get used to it. And then it, it, it happens here. So it's always about leading terms. So what number times x gives you 3x squared? 3x. So remember it goes under, and all these are really columns. This is x squared, this is the x column, this is the constant column. Everybody has a place there. All right, so 3x times x gives you 3x squared. 3x times a negative 3 makes a negative 9x. And we subtract. Or better yet, how about add the opposite. So negative 8 and a positive 9 is going to make just an x, bring down the minus 1. And then the whole process starts all over again. What number times x gives you x? Obviously, it's going to be a plus 1. 1 times x is x. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And again, adding the opposite, just making it see a little easier here. Negative 1 and 3, after the x's cross out, would just give you a 2. So, final answer how about 3x? 
plus 1 plus 2 over our divisor x minus 3. All right, number 7. All right, a few things we have to know before we do these. Um, notice there's actually an x squared missing here. This is 3x cubed, but then there's no x squared. Well, we have to make room for it because we have to make a little column for x squared. So what we do is we say x minus 2 inside 3x cubed. All right, so what can I add into this so I'm really not technically adding anything at all? And it's going to be a 0. You're right. So 0x squared plus, and then you go on with the rest of the chores there. All right. As we do this here, so x times what gives you 3x cubed? Well, that will need a 3x squared. So notice we needed this little column here. If we didn't, it would be too, sort of too squished together. So 3x squared gives you 3x cubed as you multiply the x into it. 3x squared times negative 2 makes a negative 6x squared. Subtract or add the opposite gets you 6x squared. Bring down the 3x. And the whole process starts all over again. So what number times x gives you 6x squared? Well, it has to be the plus 6. And then we have to need another x. So I think we're good there. 6x times x is 6x squared. 6x times a negative 2. Six x times a negative two makes a negative twelve x, and we subtract or add the opposite again, and we get ourselves a fifteen x. Bring down the plus one from the end, so I need two numbers multiply. Oh, sorry, what number multiplies x to gives you a fifteen x is a fifteen. So notice right here at the end we are done because we have went to the last place or the column place. Fifteen times x is fifteen is x. Fifteen times a negative two is negative thirty. And we subtract, or we got the opposite for a 31. All right, final answer, 3x squared plus 6x plus 12. I'm sorry, plus 15. Plus the remainder over our divisor. OK, number 8. Now we've got long division, and it is with multiple variables at the same time. All right, so x plus y is our divisor. And this one we should sort of tell. So you should sort of see how this works here. So notice you have an x squared, then you have x to the 1, and they have no x whatsoever. So the degrees are going down by 1. On the other hand, there's no y over here. The y to the 1, y to the 2. So the degrees for the y are going up. And if that is the case, then we know that we are in factorable form. Now let's just see if the numbers work out. And we're going to use long division, though. For OK. So x times what gives you x squared? Is x. x times x is x squared. x times y is plus 2y. Subtract, add the opposite. So negative 7xy, and then bring down the next term. So what multiplies x to give you negative 7xy? Well, uh, let's see, the negative 7 there. Y he's already having, so it should be the y value. So negative 7y times x is negative 7xy. Negative 7y times y gives you negative 7 y squared. As you subtract them, you find out, hey, you know what? I'm actually just subtracting same stuff. Hey, we get a remainder of 0, which actually tells us we actually could have done this by factoring. So let me just sort of quickly do this by factoring. Uh, before I do that, let me give you the final answer here. So it's x minus 7y is our final answer. All right, let's go to... Go 
go to this one here. Start this off by factoring instead. So the factoring the top portion only because we know we'll see a cancel here. So x in order to get x squared minus seven because of off here. And there it is. Now the x plus y, x plus y's will cancel here. So now we're just left with x minus 7y. Alright, and the last problem here. Factor x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 completely if x minus 1 is one of the factors. And this one's a little bit of a, a guessing sort of problem here. If you know that x is x minus 2 is one of the factors, we can divide that out and we'll see what's actually remaining. So x goes into x cubed, x squared times, and x squared times x gives you x cubed. x squared times and minus 2 or negative 2 makes negative 2 x squared. And again, subtracting or adding the opposite. Adding down gives me a negative 2 x squared adding x on the bottom there. All right, x times what gives you negative 2x squared? That would be a minus 2x. Again, column for it as well here. As you multiply this out, it should give you a negative 2x squared. Negative 2x squared times a negative 2 makes a positive 4x. And then again, subtracting or adding the opposites gives us a negative 3x and then bring down the 6 and what do we multiply x to give you negative 3x is a negative 3 and if that is the case then we get ourselves negative 3x plus 6 as we subtract really we get a 0 here okay what do we just learn if this is one of the factors x minus 2 that means this is the remaining polynomial that's left so let's let me rewrite it here real quick here x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 really factors down into x minus 2 times x squared minus 2x minus 3. Hey, do we know how to factor this one down? I need two numbers. Multiply to negative 3, add to negative 2. Multiply to negative 3, add to negative 2. That would be negative 3, positive 1. So x minus 2 stays, but I got myself x minus 3, x plus 1. And now I factor down all the way down. That's cool. All right, so we are done with 5.7, and we are done with Chapter 5.